found in the heart, the brain, the kidneys, the liver. Um, as, as we age, the body's capacity to produce it uh, diminishes. Gwen did a post yesterday on CoQ10, and there were a lot of questions and a lot of discussion around it. So I just wanted to talk about it a little bit and can clear it. Uh, uh, see, can clear what the heck's that? I want to talk about it a little bit, uh, answer some questions, and clear up a little bit of confusion. Okay, so um, the study that she posted a link to um, on that particular post was a, a fairly recent study showing um, some real benefits for heart disease uh, dogs um, with the use of CoQ10. And then in my blog on CoQ10 on the website on drjudymorgan.com, um, uh, I had posted another study that's a little bit older out of Thailand that showed, and in that one, um, they took dogs in stage C congestive heart failure, and for four weeks they gave them uh, CoQ10, and uh, they gave them about 10 milligrams per pound of body weight for the small dogs, smaller smaller ones in the study, and they used the same dose for the bigger dogs. Um, sorry, they used 100 milligrams twice a day, so the smaller dogs were 13 pounds, and the bigger dogs were above that. And what they found was that it actually shrunk the heart size in that four-week period uh, just by adding the CoQ10. So that's huge. Um, and so the smaller breeds were getting 10, about 10 milligrams per pound, whereas the larger ones were getting a lower dose. And so they didn't see as much effect in that. So um, what that tells us is that we have to be giving higher doses. The, the veterinary doses that have been recommended, if veterinarians recommend it at all, for years have been one milligram per pound of body weight, which is we're finding that's just not enough. So uh, what dogs or cats or people or horses, because we actually use CoQ10 in our horses and our miniature horses, so for helping with things like laminitis, uh, CoQ10 is really, really, really powerful, and it's an antioxidant and really helps um, repair some tissue damage as well It's because it's what it's used for is energy. It's part of the energy cycle of the cell, and so the little powerhouse in every cell in our body is the mitochondria, and so they use CoQ10 or ubiquinol, and somebody said they have a, a question, you know, confused about, and I'm going to talk about the difference in um, between those. Let me find it here. Okay, so ubiquinol may yield a bit more active compound in the body, which means you may be able to give a little less ubiquinol than CoQ10 to get the same result. When CoQ10 that has been oxidized which it's then called ubiquinone, is used by the body, it transforms and becomes ubiquinol. So they're really the same thing. It's just it comes into the energy cycle in different different spots in that cycle. So CoQ10 might come in here, and then it goes through an oxidation to become ubiquinone, and then it becomes ubiquinol. Or you can just jump straight to the ubiquinol. Um, you pay more for ubiquinol in general, so it just depends what you're looking to do. They're both going to be effective. One thing I will say, this is a fat-soluble substance. So when given with fats, um, it is better absorbed and better utilized. So for my own, I saw um, a study from years ago, like 30 years ago, where a doctor uh, came up with dissolving the CoQ10 powder in... Um, warm water uh, greater than 104 degrees because 104 degrees is the melting point for the uh, CoQ10 uh, crystals. So uh, put it in warm water 
or bone broth, whatever you want to use, and then add a fat to it. So they actually used coconut oil and then gave that to the dogs to drink, and it was uh, better absorbed that way. You can also add it to the food. So if you're feeding a food that is warm and it's got fats in it, which most of our foods, unless you're feeding an ultra-low fat diet, which is not recommended anyway, um, so when you're feeding it with the fats in the diet, particularly if you're using something like a, a uh, an, an omega-3 oil, you're going to have enough fats for absorption. So that's just a, a little thought on how to get it absorbed. Um, all right, so CoQ10, <laughs> this is interesting. So this first article, it starts out with, one important coenzyme is coenzyme CoQ10, also known as CoQ10 or ubiquinone. It's all the same, folks. Uh, very much resembles vitamin E and is vital in helping prevent and treat chronic illnesses. It's produced by the liver and found in every cell in the body. It plays a fundamental role in the mitochondria, which are the parts of the cell that produce energy. It controls the flow of oxygen within the cells and is needed and used by all cells to produce energy for cell growth and maintenance. It also functions as an antioxidant that reduces damage to cells due to oxidation from harmful free radicals. In addition... CoQ10 helps enzymes digest food and helps protect the heart and skeletal muscles. Foods that are rich in CoQ10 include oily fish such as mackerel, sardines, and salmon, as well as organ meats, liver, kidney, and heart, which should all be part of your pet's diets anyway. And CoQ10 can be destroyed at temperatures above 115, so we've got this little window that we want it to be in. Um, so when we look at these foods that contain that are high in coq10 if you're cooking them then you're destroying them so that's why you know one of another reason why raw feeding is going to supply more of the enzyme um can it be used for a dog with liver disease yes all right so um coq10 is let's see heart muscles work non-stop so the heart muscle cells need all the energy they can get coq10 is extremely important for providing energy to the heart and for cell growth and maintenance um, the heart needs coq10 to ensure normal healthy circulation and it does help lower blood pressure as well um, it's been used for years for periodontal disease prevention in um, dogs in particular but also because mouth tissue cells have a high turnover rate, just like our GI tract, it's a very high turnover rate with those cells. Um, so we need a lot of CoQ10 to prevent gum disease, abscesses, and it can decrease oral ulcers in dog cancer patients as a, well, dog, cat, whatever, as a result of chemotherapy or radiation. Um, for... Uh, Cancer animals, we find that almost all of them are low in CoQ10 and vitamin D. Um, so CoQ10 can be very helpful for them. It also is cardioprotective if you have an animal on chemotherapy with adriamycin, which is uh, very hard on the heart. If you have an animal on chemotherapy, talk to your oncologist before giving CoQ10 because it is an antioxidant and some of the chemotherapy drugs do work through an oxidation cycle. So um, gastrointestinal health, again, the cells lining the GI tract are constantly turning over, so they need a lot of energy for cell growth and maintenance. Um, liver health, uh, again, high turnover rate. CoQ10 provides the energy needed for liver cell growth and repair so that chances of developing liver disease are lowered. Brain health, this is incredibly neuroprotective. Somebody said that they give it to their cavalier with episodic falling syndrome and it uh, stops the dog from having episodes, so really critical. Um, it's been used quite a lot in humans as well as um, dogs for neurologic problems and uh, nerve degeneration, that sort of thing. Um, and there's uh, interesting studies for people that take statins um, a torvastatin has been studied a lot, but any of the statins that it lowers the uh, blood, uh, the brain CoQ10 significantly and contributes to dementia. So, for any of you who are on statins or have family members who are on statins, and they actually did studies where they put dogs on statins. We don't generally do that very often, but they took put dogs on statins and then uh, measured cognitive function and CoQ10 levels and found that the statins just drastically dropped 
the CoQ10 levels and increased the canine cognitive dysfunction scores. So um, for the, for the for the worse. So uh, definitely for our seniors, really, really, really important for cognitive function. Um, CoQ10 has been shown to stimulate the immune system. Uh, so for those who have a weakened immune system, uh, definitely um, would be good. And then it's a powerful antioxidant that is used in cancer treatment, uh, especially the adriamycin. But again, ask about uh, the drugs that your dog's being given. Um, so when should your pet get um, CoQ10 added? Well, if they are on commercial foods like kibble where it's cooked under high heat, they're not getting CoQ10 in their diet. So it would be good to supplement. Um, dogs with heart disease or bro or breeds that are prone to the development heart of heart problems should be supplemented. One breeder of Cavaliers said she starts them at um, six months old. I don't think you can start it too early, but our the body does make a quite a bit of CoQ10 when we're young, but the process declines as we age. So with dogs, cats, horses, people, whatever, we make less of it as we age. So the older we are, the more supplementation we need and the more likely we are to need supplementation because we're all fighting, you know, decline in brain function. We're all fighting, um, you know, decline in heart function. So, um, so it should be for breeds that are prone to heart disease like if i had a great dane they're so prone to dilated cardiomyopathy boxers you know all those breeds that are prone uh any breeds that are prone to mitral valve disease i would get them started for the bigger breeds i would probably start earlier just because they traditionally have a shorter lifespan in general um and i would supplement at least five milligrams per pound of body weight twice a day um, if I had a dog that actually had heart disease, then I would be looking at 10 milligrams per pound of body weight twice a day. Um, so active dogs, like uh, dogs that do a lot of agility, hunting dogs, um, could benefit for muscle growth, re maintenance, and repair. Uh, certainly dogs with periodontal disease, gingivitis, mouth inflammation, dogs with GI problems, ulcers, colitis, liver disease, um, liver inflammation can all benefit. Uh, all right. And dogs with cancer and those with a weakened immune system will benefit. Um, also, it uh, for dogs with kidney disease, there are great studies that actually show that giving CoQ10 will reduce creatinine levels. So dogs and cats on this one. And then uh, cats that are breeds that are prone to heart disease, like the Maine Coons, the Ragdolls, I would start supplementing them early in life as well. And for the kitty cats, you might find that like a liquid ubiquinol might be easier to get into them. Um, so the production of coenzyme CoQ10 in the, in the body diminishes with aging. It's... Uh, found in the heart, the brain, the kidneys, the liver. Um, as, as we age, the body's capacity to produce it uh, diminishes, and that can weaken the immune system. We all, look <laughs> at my immune system, it, it, it died. <laughs> um, when lacking sufficient amounts of CoQ10, we can get lethargy, free la radical damage, and the risk of heart problems higher than in uh, younger animals. Um, other reasons that CoQ10 levels might be low and need supplementation include vitamin B6 deficiencies, genetic factors, oxidative stress due to age, medication side effects, and various diseases, including heart disease. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, other conditions such as diabetes um, can also see improvement with CoQ10. Uh, now, somebody mentioned in the thread that um, their cardiologist, their cat is on uh, blood thinner. And so the cardiologist said not to give CoQ10. Um, I use CoQ10, but you can use your Biquinol. And I explained that they just come in different places uh, in the cycle. Um, can dogs take a human brand or is there one just for dogs? The ones for dogs are in two, they're usually 30 milligram. You're going to have to give 20 of them. They're, they're just not big enough. We use the now brand that we have on the website. Um, and that's a human brand. Oh, okay. So the, uh, cat with the blood thinner, 
um, the veterinarian, the cardiologist said not to use CoQ10 because it can uh, weaken the effect of the um, blood thinner. Interestingly, I, I looked that up because I had not heard that. And um, there were, I found three human studies. One said that uh, giving CoQ10 can decrease the effectiveness of warfarin and blood thinners in people. The second study said it can increase the effectiveness of warfarin and blood thinners and cause excess bleeding. The third study said it had no effect at all. So I got one of each. Your choice. <laughs> so take your dog's body weight, multiply by 10. Um, that's what strength you need, and you're going to give it twice a day or something close. Um, so for kitty cat with ckd i would try to get as close to 10 milligrams so that's probably going to be a 100 milligram a 60 to 100 milligram capsule uh twice a day or if you can get a liquid doesn't really matter um no the dosing for ubiquinol tends to be a little bit lower just because it's a tiny bit more bioavailable but there i haven't seen as good a studies i've only seen coq10 studies so um but i mean this is good for every breed for Every species. Um, what about the horses? Uh, so um, our mini horses, when they ha were ha dealing with laminitis, Joyce Harmon had us give them, I believe it was 200 milligrams twice a day. I kind of feel like that was a little low, but it did help them. So um, you're not going to hurt them. The only, um, the only uh, side effect that I have ever seen with CoQ10, particularly in some of my cancer patients, was a loosened stool. So, um, you know, if they get a loose stool, then you might have to back up, back up on your dose a little bit, but, or back down on your dose a little bit, but otherwise I haven't had a problem. Okay. I'm going back to bed. Um, I got to go feed a bunch of animals first, but everybody have a wonderful weekend. I'm, I'm just not quite all there. <laughs> everybody have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>